All right, so in Houdini, we want to make a bullet sim out of that. Let's see how many scripts yeah. we need to go here. And um, just to mention before we started this bullet, uh, the yeah, the shape collision video, or in the la after the last Houdini video we just recorded, Eloy was complaining how long it takes to set this up and like giving me all kind of shit, how slow it is in Houdini. That's well, like yeah, that's right. Well, shit. let's let's switch it around. You want to have yeah. a RVD system? Yes. Watch this. Hit enter. Did it do it? Yes, it did. You have a good arm? Boom! RVD system created. Okay. And with gravity? Wow. With everything, rigid wow. body solver. So that's that rigid body so Oh no, it does it, dude. So it does the bullet. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> we don't have the ground yet. No, we don't have a ground. We don't have a ground. You know, it's just create a ground. Look at that. It's even called ground. But this will be like a black box in TP. So we have a, it's like a built, a pre built black box. Kind of. Doesn't matter. Look, look at it. Your video took 10 minutes, man. I was already falling asleep. It's getting late. <laughs> So we just create a static solver and we put that in here and we just move this down a little bit. And what's gonna happen? Boom! Whoa. Case closed, I'm going home. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> I can show how to do a black box in TP and we'll I don't have to create a that. black box, it's like in the software. Well. Alright, anyhow. No, I'm kidding. Of course, if you wanted to create this from scratch, um, it would take a little bit. Especially um, in TP, we created a, a particle itself out of, um, out of the ground. So let's actually do this. So um, <clears throat> I'll just quickly do it from scratch like uh, Eloy did. So what we're going to do, um, let me take that away, take this away. So, we have already packed primitives, and that's something we need to do um, for, <clears throat> from this, for this to work. So even if we didn't have that, if every sphere was unique, come on, if every sphere was unique, unique um, like here, so we have um, all kind of objects, and we set this to polygon mesh, so we still have to create um, packed primitives. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use an assemble node. And basically what the assemble node does, it kind of creates out of each object or sphere or fragment, whatever you have, it creates a pack or it, it adds a piece attribute and it packs um, them based on that attribute. Go piece, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever. So if we go to geometry spreadsheet so you have here a name list and each piece has a name with a number and now we're back at 212 packed objects or packed spheres mm -hmm. and let me just go proper workflow we call this what will happen if you don't use that uh, we will just have one giant geometry but okay to to make an rbd bullet sim we need to create packed packs pack primitives um, and we go to call this, uh, oh, call this, call this, cool, and now we create a dot network, alright, so this is our TP, um, so, so far we just created a scene of, of spheres, and now we're going inside the TP, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create the pack uh, RBD import and I'm gonna point to the path um, two levels above and grab the out RBDs so this is this node so this node is being imported into this node and this is what it outputs so now I pipe that into a bullet solver and there we go that is the same as we have in TP and now I type in gravity force and now that is being output so again we're having our pack primitives each one separately and 
a gravity. Um, now, if we want to create a ground so, you know, box, and just scale this. like a layer system like you have in 3ds max so you can manage like well you don't need it because you have each object is a layer like you can it's use contained there yeah that's like a container and you can you know you show only what you want um so now we have our spheres we have a ground object so we need to also import our ground object so we just call this ground and now we merge those. All right, so we have that. And by default, um, um, right, by default, everything is active or um, and I think non-deforming. So you have three attributes here. You see active, animated, and deforming. And um, because uh, we, our ground needs to be static, we need to set um, what does it say here? When enabled, spec specifies a lift or point attribute that will be updated on each frame from the sub path. So what we need to do, we need to go up here and we need to set this uh, active integer at active equals zero. And now the ground shouldn't be moving anymore. There you go. What? What, what do you need to do that? Well, this is, this is the same as you did here. You but see, the ground is uh, static, but and can, the spheres are. But active. you cannot define it in a place like you need to write actually to say. Hmm. You need to write. There is no. Well, right now this object doesn't even have this attribute, so okay. by default, um, bullet just says okay, everything is active. But for example, I think th it wouldn't. Um, it's not animated or deforming. So if you wanted it to be animated, you would have to give it. Um, you have to give it here a i at animated. What is the i for? Integer. So integer okay. integer attribute at means of myself of okay. my kind of whatever geometry I am, and then. In this case, it's not animated, so we set it to zero. But that is the default, anyways. Now, if that would be changing over time, so let's say let's say you want to activate things over time, you need to change this attribute on this level here, and then you have to add say which one do you want to override over time. So um, yeah, so if we would want to activate these guys over time, we could quickly do this. We can do that actually in the, next video. In, in the, the next video. In the next video, yeah. yeah. Okay, but since we're not doing this anyways, yeah. um, the cool thing is what you can do is you can actually show, um, um, so you can show your collider, you can show the convex hull? Yeah, it's using as a yeah. You can show it. I'm not sure because we cannot do this in TP, and it's something that right. Um, I think I s you show me once that. But there should be also a way to not show the geometry. I thought there was something, but anyways, um, so you have here convex all the settings that you have in Max mm -hmm. as well. Um, then collision padding is your. Um, I think that was it's the margin. Margin, yeah. The cool thing that you have in Houdini that I saw is that 
when you increase the collision padding at the same time we have shrink amount mm -hmm. that what it's doing is that the shrink amount is like a push inverted max so the geometry actually is going smaller so what it does is that um, it's compensating so by one side oh, there you go you you can visualize now, it that the blue is the the actual yeah so i turned off the shrinking yeah yeah so the shrinking what it's doing it's compensating compensating for the margin so since we are we are reducing the geometry adding um, a margin so the end the margin it will be at the same level as the original geometry mm -hmm. but inside bullet we will have some margin to play with and it's something that will be very good to have in tp right so yeah so that's basically it and that's basically the same thing that you had um the, the good thing that is that all settings are the same in Houdini. Yeah, because it, it uses an external bullet, library. Yeah, so if you check the bullet solver, I think that I saw ERP, ERP, and the values are exactly the same default as TP. Right. TP, we use uh, the ERP, we are using it to push geometry when they are intersecting. Yeah, it's, it's a error, error reduction parameter yeah. or whatever it's called. Uh, um, so, oh, yeah, but then if you wanted to do physical setting, like you do it here, you know, yeah, like your bounds, your friction, and then I think bullets itself, um, yeah. This will be our pretty rigid body. In the yeah. So I, I, I have to admit, I haven't been doing as much RBDs in Houdini so far as I did in TP, but yeah. We will not touch it now, but how it is the jointing system in Houdini for bullet? Um, so jointing is, I find it a little bit more complex to create from scratch. If you use the, the you know, the, the, the tools, it kind of, it works for you, but then when you have to do it yourself, it becomes quite complex. But I mean, it, it takes also a while in TP until you learn it. Like it's, in the beginning, I, I remember yeah. it was, it, it took a while. And then once you kind of get your head around it, it becomes like, oh yeah. It becomes logic, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I guess that it's like everything. Right. We have kind of like a diff multiple ways to do it. We can use P-Search to look for the closest one. And yeah. now we have geom contact, so automatically yeah. checks for closest geometry surface. So, so Houdini does the same thing. It just has a node on the sub level. And then if you wanted to update that within the DOP, you have to create sub solvers. And then, then it becomes really complex. That's, that's where Houdini is like really tricky to handle is when you when you want to change sub dynamic sub geometry within a top. So if you let's say you wanted to re-break the spheres every time they collide, that would become fairly complex in Houdini. While in TP it's just add another volume, break and another group. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So but that is about pretty much that. Um, well, I've done. <laughs> done. <laughs> done. Simple and uh, fairly similar again um, workflows, I would say. I mean, of course, it looks a little different, but the logic, like the steps that you have to go through, are fairly similar. In TP, yeah, less steps, but. Is it similar? Yes. Uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> that I, one if, click. If I do black box, it will be one click, to, You know yeah. that. But you have but to create yeah. the black box first. Fairly similar. Uh, uh, anyways. Yeah, close that. Close it. <laughs> All right. Have a good one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it.